let's say that we did this reaction uh, with light instead of heat. Now, what's the purpose of this light? Well, the light is providing energy that can promote an electron. This is actually a topic that uh, would make more sense maybe if you'd, uh, if you'd taken physics. So maybe you've seen this in chemistry too. So the light here, these photons are providing energy that can promote electrons out of their ground state. So one of these electrons is going to absorb one of those photons and move up to here. One of the electrons can move up to here. Now, what difference does that make? Well, the difference that it makes is it changes who the homo is. Now, this is the homo. Remember that for electrocyclic reactions, all we care about is the homo. We don't care about the lumo. But now, this is the homo. Um, so this is now the molecular orbital diagram that we should draw. So now I'm going to have to change the shading to get a new molecular orbital diagram. And the key point is, notice that here, we started in an anti-symmetric. In this case, we had an anti-symmetric orbital, but now we're back up to the symmetric orbital. And the reason that matters is that in an anti-symmetric orbital, the two end orbitals are opposite to each other, whereas here they're the same as each other. So we can expect an opposite outcome. So let's uh, do some more shading here. So now the molecular orbital diagram would look like this. The light here has promoted an electron to a higher orbital, so now we have a different homo. Now this is the homo. Well, since we have a different homo, we have a different shading. Remember that, we're, that which molecular orbital are we drawing? We're only drawing the shading that's based on the homo. We're only drawing the shading that's based on the homo. Well, we change the homo because of the energy absorbed by this electron. So how do you know the... Um Oh, oh, you just so I just said, suppose we do this with light. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. if we do it with light, that will promote an electron. So you just use the shading of the new. Then we use the shading of the new. Right? This is why, again, it's so important to always have a complete diagram of all the molecular orbitals so you can pick out the one that you need. So this is the first time we've done a problem where we had a promoted electron, or what's called an excited electron. So now this is kind of the valence electron. Now let's suppose we still need to form a sigma bond based on this arrow. Let's say that, and so these are both going to have to rotate so that they're having head to head. If this rotates clockwise, so that it looks like this, which way should this one rotate? Counterclockwise, Counter so that its shading will have a constructive bond interference. Well, is that con or disrotatory? And now we've explained this row in the table. Now we've proven this row in the table, which says that when we have an even number of arrows under photochemical conditions, we should have a disrotatory outcome. And you can see why every, every row is just the opposite of the previous row. Because every time you make one little change, you change, say, from a symmetric to an anti-symmetric bonding orbital, so you change from whether you want conrotatory or disrotatory. So maybe we won't go through the, the logic, the pictures for this row, but you can see that every time we make one change, we're changing from a anti-symmetric homo to a symmetric homo, or vice versa, and that's going to change whether we want a conrotatory or disrotatory picture at the end. So in this case, we would want the disrotatory picture. Uh, and that explains why with that uh, light, it would look like this. OK? OK. Um, so to think about the difference between heat and light, remember that we should just think of the heat. We just add heat as kind of like a normal reaction. The heat is just, you can think of it as, I guess, just a little heat to get us over the activation energy. But when we add light, we should think of that as a photon that's going to promote an electron. We should not think of the heat as promoting electrons. We don't think of the heat as promoting electrons. We just think of that as helping us get over the activation energy. But the light here is delivering a photon that helps us to promote an electron. So that changes uh, an electron to the next excited state, which gives us the hope. OK. Um, Now, what, what, the other common example is when we have three pi electrons, right? How many pi molecular orbitals would there be here? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
six. Yeah. Um, but that, that's more that's a that's a lot of pictures to draw, right? But just to save ourselves a little bit of time. Is this one going to be symmetric or anti-symmetric? Uh, symmetric. Then anti-symmetric, symmetric, anti-symmetric, symmetric, anti-symmetric. Anti How many pi electrons do we have? Six. Yeah, six. So in the thermal case, this would be the homo. This would be the homo. Now notice, then, is the homo going to be symmetric or anti-symmetric? Symmetric. But in the thermal case with only four pi electrons, the homo was anti-symmetric. So this explains why when we go from the thermal case here to the thermal case here, we go from con-rotatory to dis-rotatory. Um, so even without drawing all six of these molecular orbitals, we can just say, well, we uh, clearly in, in this case, in, under thermal conditions, the homo is anti-symmetric. Uh, but we can see that under thermal conditions, the homo here would be symmetric. So if in this case we wanted the con-rotatory to get the bonding interaction, here we're going to have to have the opposite, dis-rotatory. Does that make sense? All right. And on the other hand, let's say that we're under photochemical conditions. And the anti. Under photochemical conditions, this would be the homo, right? Because then there would be a promotion up to here. Whereas under photochemical conditions, this was the homo with only four electrons. Well, with four electrons, the homo is symmetric. But with six electrons, now the homo is uh, anti-symmetric. So again, since we have opposite symmetry, it's not surprising that we get a different rotation under light, uh, under photochemical conditions in these two cases. So again, even without drawing all of the uh, orbitals here, we're, we're able to, uh, just by focusing on the relationship between the end orbitals, we can see whether it should be con or dis-rotatory. 